Good afternoon, Oliver Slope, Blue Line Futures, coming to you from the Chicago Board of Trade with another episode of Tech Talk. It is Tuesday, September 6th. I hope you all had an enjoyable long weekend filled with college football. I was happy to see the Huskers were able to squeeze out a nail-biter against their arch-rival, North Dakota. That was a joke. Uh, but uh, anyways, before we get into the charts, I do want to bring to your attention, we're on a different platform today. This is the Blue Line Edge Plus uh, this is available to clients. We have a, a little bit lower version just called the Blue Line Edge, which is free to clients uh, who have a brokerage account with us. And it's great to chart from a lot of neat bells and whistles and technical indicators. And you can make it however you want. It's fully customizable, which is the great thing about it. Chart, uh, trade, etc. You can do everything from this bad boy. So Blue Line Edge and Blue Line Edge Plus. Now, as far as the markets go, we've got December corn pulled up here. This is the daily chart, and we've been talking about this for really the last couple of sessions in our daily grain commentary that we wouldn't be surprised to see this market just start to consolidate ahead of Monday's USDA report. That is Monday, September 12th. Over the last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of job owning back and forth with regards to what the yield is going to be. We saw DTN start last month uh, with a low estimate. We saw Pro Farmer follow that up with a low estimate. And last week, we got a, a lower estimate from the USDA, but higher than DTN and Pro Farmer. That was the Stone X uh, customer survey. They came in at 173.2 bushels per acre, below the 175.4 from the USDA. Uh, didn't really have the the uh, market reaction like we got from Pro Farmer, but still noteworthy. And we've been talking about, you know, I think the market trying to price in somewhere between a 170 and a 172. I don't think many people are trading the 175.4, but I think that the important thing to note here over the last month is that we have all these estimates now and the market has largely digested a lower corn yield. So it shouldn't come as a, a big surprise next week to see the USDA lower that number. Again, they're at 175.4. Now, as far as the soybeans go, wouldn't be surprised to see them maybe stay a little bit closer to where they're at. They're at 51.8, I think, uh, or 51.9, rather. And I think Stone X was at 51.8 and Pro Farmer 51.7. So there's a, a little bit tighter of a cluster in soybeans. The uh, variability in the corn yield estimates, though, is a lot wider, which should keep things interesting, and hence, I think, why we start to consolidate between the support pocket and resistance pocket. Now, we're at the upper end of the range following today's session, so I wouldn't, uh, you know, be too opposed to looking on the sell side against this, especially if you're a producer who needs to lay off some risk, and if, if you know, in July or August, you were saying, man, I wish I would have sold something at, you know, 680, 675, right around there. Well, here's your opportunity ahead of a USDA report to lay off some of that risk, because if we do fail here and eventually break down below support, we wouldn't be surprised to see that pressure continue and take us towards these major moving averages. Uh, 634, 621, I believe there's also a little bit of a gap right in there as well, 633 to 633 and a quarter, if I'm not mistaken. So that's what we're looking at from the technical perspective. If the market was able to break out above here, that's your area to say, hey, you know, I'm wrong. So that's where you know you're wrong is a breakout and close above resistance. About that 690 area above there, there's not a whole lot of resistance. And as with the downside, you got this little gap here. You've also got a little gap on the upside. So kind of those are your, your tap out points. Uh, if you're short, break out above here, rip the Band-Aid off and move on. If you're long, break and close below support and probably get out of the way on that front. Now, as far as the soybean chart goes, uh, we're, we're a little bit more bearish. Uh, pardon the sirens in the background. This is Chicago, so it's a fairly common occurrence. But uh, the soybeans were a little bit more bearish, John. I think that we're going to come out with a pretty darn good yield. I think South America is probably going to have a... Uh, uh, quite a bit planted here as they progress into their season. So we have a little bit less optimism on this front, but we were able to defend Thursday, Friday lows. And we talked about that this morning. Break and close below there, I think, opens the door for a uh, refill of this July 26th gap, call it 1345, 1355. But we were able to defend those lows. So the bulls should feel a little bit more comfortable. Uh, after defending that level, but they really need to get something going out above these Friday highs, 1420, 
24 ish 1425 that could potentially open uh, the door for some buying towards the top end of the recent range which comes in closer to 1455 1460 and uh, above that you get these highs top end of the range going all the way back to july august and uh here recently what day was that august 24th so uh, kind of in the middle of the range, but I think overall has a little bit of a heavy feeling to it. The big wild card for us is China. Uh, they continue to have some lockdowns throughout some of their major cities. And we're also keeping a very close eye on what's uh, happening and potentially developing in the Taiwan Strait uh, as China continues to posture uh, by flying drones and, and uh, sailing some ships uh, around Taiwan. Now, lastly, wrapping things up with live cattle, we've got December live cattle pulled up, uh, tested and held in trendline support pocket here last week, had a big up day on Friday, which shocked us, and got some follow through today, which actually shocked us as well, because we saw the cash market soften up last week. We would have thought that would add a little bit of pressure to prices uh, to start the week, especially with the outside markets undergoing a little bit of volatility and uncertainty. Uh, but nonetheless, they have rallied back-to-back -back days and are back here uh, approaching the top end of the range. Uh, the top end of the range comes in right about 151.25. Those are those recent highs. Break out and close above there, and you know, we could be off to the races. Um, again, this is uh, for the December contract, but uh, work, working with a lot of guys in the cattle industry, we like being on the sell side. We have protected that with some call options, so something to consider on that front. There's a bullish seasonal for April live cattle that starts at the end of this month. So we're, we're I think, hoping for a little bit lower prices so we can position into that. Um, and if you want to learn more about that seasonal, please uh, shoot me a note. My email, oliver at bluelinefutures.com. Again, email me, oliver at bluelinefutures.com. So that's what we're looking at. That's what you guys should be looking at, too. If you got any questions, feel free to reach out. Remember, trading futures and options involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors.